Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to ENR the Life Binder on Mythic in Antorus the Burning Throne. So this fight has changed a fair amount, the portals now spawn in different places at different times, and the adds that come out of them spawn in different combinations. It is however just like Heroic set, so you can learn it as you go through. There isn't any new portal adds to deal with, and all the adds that you did see on Heroic have the exact same abilities. Also like Heroic, the strategy is generally stick as two groups and go around and fight at different portals, with a couple of players assigned to the bats. The one big change on Mythic, however, is that you need to send teams of four players to go defeat an add on top of the Paraxis at set points throughout the fight. So throughout the fight, the Paraxis will begin to cast Final Doom, a 50 second cast that will instantly wipe the raid if it goes through. To stop the cast, you need to kill an add that spawns on the ship at the side of the arena. To get to the ship, you need to stand on one of the four crystal patches that spawn behind Iana once Final Doom starts casting. Using this crystal will remove it and teleport you to the room. So you need to send four players up to kill this ad, which is the Inquisitor. Now this ad needs to be engaged in melee combat, but it doesn't melee hit very hard. His damage comes from his spells. Mind Blast will burst a single player down, and Rack will chunk the entire team's health pool. Both of these need to be interrupted just to keep people safe. Now this guy really doesn't have much health at all so you can very quickly nuke him down. And once he is dead, you need to interact with the four coloured crystals around the room. Doing so will interrupt the final doom cast and allow you to leave the ship and rejoin the raid. Now each player can only take a single crystal and each coloured crystal gives a different permanent debuff. The blue crystal will cause you to periodically interrupt anyone within 10 yards of you. You have a notification just before this happens, so you need to just move away from players just before this pulses out. This buff is best placed on players that simply don't even cast spells, so melee DPS or hunters. With that said, you can always throw it on a caster, they'll just need to make sure that they stop casting before the pulse goes out, otherwise they are going to lock themselves. The red crystal will cause you to periodically deal damage and knock up yourself and anyone else within 8 yards of you. Just like the blue crystal, this also gives you a notification just before it happens, so just move away from other players and you'll be absolutely fine. This buff is best placed on players that have some way of countering the knockup, so blinks, shadow steps, leaps, all those sort of things are great just to avoid the huge downtime you get by being thrown up into the air. The green crystal will cause you to be targeted by rain of fell circles as well as the random raid damage from the ship every single time it is cast. This simply just means that whatever player takes this is going to be taking more damage than usual, so this can essentially be placed on anyone, the player just needs to make sure they are always within range of healers, otherwise they are going to die. And lastly, the yellow crystal will cause you to gain a stacking dot whilst you're moving around the encounter, and the stacks will drop off one by one as you stand still. Whatever player decides to pick this up just simply needs to limit their movement, just so their stacks don't go too high. This is best placed on healers as they can always just keep themselves up throughout the fight and generally speaking, they don't move around as much as DPS anyway. So you'll need to assign all four players to each individual crystal for each group that goes up and once all the crystals have been used, the door of the Paraxis will open and players can leave. You move towards the northern exit, use your extra action button and you can simply just fly back down to your group. Now a large portion of your progression can be cut out before you even enter the instance, just by setting up your groups correctly beforehand. You will have to deal with four final doom casts throughout the fight, so you will need to create four teams each with four players. Each team needs to have one healer and three DPS, and preferably you'll have two short cooldown interrupts. And also within these teams you do need to assign who is going to be taking each coloured crystal. The most important aspect of setting up these teams is that you'd want to take players evenly from the split 10-man groups downstairs. Each time you send a ship team up, you want to take two people from each group, rather than send three or four people from a single group that's downstairs, because otherwise they're going to fall behind with whatever adds they're dealing with. So before the raid, you need to identify who you want to send up in each team, and then make sure that those people are split between the groups evenly. You may also want to think about what type of DPS you are sending up in any given group, such as ideally you don't really want to send two really good AoE DPS from one group up at the same time, as you may fall behind in the adds downstairs for that 10 man group as well. Now as you only need 16 people in total to deal with the ship throughout the fight, as of course you need to send different people up every single time because you can't use a crystal twice, you will have four people remain downstairs. This will be your two tanks and two of your DPS. The two DPS that you decide to leave downstairs should be responsible for the bats. So things like Shadow Priests and Warlocks with the Slowing Ring, that kind of thing are absolutely perfect for this role because not only can they do a shit ton of damage to the bats, but they can keep themselves alive without a healer. 
Bat players should also be split so they each follow a different group. When the bats spawn and get in range over the middle path, they should abandon their groups and go deal with the bats by themselves. And of course, if a group happens to be doing nothing during this time or just killing something on the middle path, they can also help kill off the bats as well. So that's everything that you need to know about the encounter, but of course, it's a completely new portal order. And going through an entire eight minute encounter in a video format isn't going to be all that useful. And really, not only is each set of ads pretty simple to deal with in terms of ad priority, which group goes to which portal is pretty fluid. To add, boss mods have very accurate timers for when and where the portals are going to spawn, so it's even possible just for your raid leader to call what group goes where on the fly. That being said, there are tons of public logs all over Warcraft logs, which you can watch back with the replay feature to see exactly who goes where at what time. And on top of this, we've also made a full table of portals for this fight on Mythic, which says where the portals spawn and at what time and with what ads and how you need to deal with them. That can be found over on our written guide over on Wowhead, alongside the rest of the information that we've also covered in this video so go check that out but a big thank you for watching if you found this guide useful then do throw a like on it it helps us out a lot and if you wish to support us further then do consider joining the amazing group of people you see on screen now who all support us on patreon you guys are great thank you very much and thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next time thanks for watching thanks for watching